<laughs> live on Facebook. We're doing it live. We're figuring out live. We it's going to be our little like pregame segment before our recording batches where we get to relax a little bit and just drink and talk to fans. Ooh, two viewers. Man, three. And if you thought our regular episodes were casual... <laughs> <laughs> Have you been watching oh, this for oh, the past keep, four minutes? We're keeping it cash. <laughs> but um, literally... Those what viewers are dropping like flies. <laughs> <laughs> literally what I was just saying was uh, this is something that we had talked about on a previous episode and something that Mike and I have been talking about doing. And then Mike last night was like, do, do you want to try it? And I was <laughs> like, yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, so we're really just feeling it out right now without any sort of outline or anything. This is kind of this is throwing it back to remember like our stickam days in college. Oh yeah, where Joe and I would blog TV. Was it blog TV or stickam that we would? There were on? so many of them. There was a frenzy of. Uh, yeah, there was a bunch of camming sites back then, but we would get pretty drunk in college, and then just go on like either blog TV or stickam at the time and just. Mm-hmm talk to people that were watching us Mm -hmm. for some reason we would like take our our shirts off sometimes while doing it not gonna not gonna bring that back but no definitely there was a lot of like old men out there that are probably like (laughs) hey no be funny if you two fellas you 18 year old boys took your shirts off actually hope you're not 18 uh (laughs) it's kind of a turnoff for me (laughs) well what's how old (laughs) oh hey shane how's it going Shane J. Shane J. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess, yeah, we wanted to use this as a platform to, A, Mike and I need to drink a little before we get started with our episodes to kind of get us into the... Sometimes the first episode of a batch can be a little, like, dry at first. It's, as we're yeah, it can be stale. Getting into it. Not that our too drunk episodes it means our last episodes are gonna be even worse (laughs) yeah um uh but yeah i think we just wanted to uh, bring up uh, personal shit going on kind of uh like for example i mean grievances (laughs) (laughs) this is a really did you you eat lunch today what? Did you eat lunch today? Yeah, I just oh, had okay. it. I didn't eat lunch. Oh my! So this is gonna be a good, mm-hmm. good batch of episodes. Good times, good, good times. times. There's gonna be. I know there's gonna, gonna be good. Times. <laughs> this is the worst segment. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, they knew but, exactly what they yes, were signing uh, up for. Mm-hmm. This is us this is, recording live without any kind of like notes mm-hmm. or movie to be a skeleton for our antics i feel like it's gonna get better you just have can to do it every day uh, <laughs> <laughs> did you watch any of the new bojack yet i haven't i have been too busy lately to uh pick it up but i'm super excited we could also use this to talk about tv stuff we not could that, not that i'm watching any tv stuff hey any of the five people that are watching uh what was your favorite tv show from this past season four people watching four people <laughs> Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, probably. <laughs> I also just want to... What's it called? I mean, while we're talking, I just I just want to try and hit all the different things. Fuck. Now I'm just going to... I wanted to say congratulations to Joe Mano. Oh, hell yeah. Um, For... I don't have exactly what it was. What was it called? The, the key, maybe? It's a, it's a key? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but... The Key, uh, who is like a blog or they publish articles for a radio station around here, WPN, or I don't even know if I'm butchering their name, but they're kind of like a modern rock kind of uh, very popular radio station out here. But they wrote an article about a frequent guest collaborator, what have you, Joe Mano and the O Word podcast, Uh, his most recent episode. He did an interview with somebody named Abby Raymond, Raymond, uh, sorry, Abby, Raymond, Raymond, if I'm butchering <laughs> your name as well. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the dream, baby, to to do a to podcast an episode. Yeah, <laughs> much like we were when the Odyssey yes. wrote about us and yes, said we were the number two podcast you had to know about. Thanks, Riley. You know what? I don't care if you specifically said that they were in no specific order. I know we're number two. 
I know we're number one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sister, mister. Don't do <laughs> sister, sister. <laughs> My oh, sister, man. Anna, just joined at the same time that Joe's sister, Christy, just joined. That was, uh, that was really weird. It was serendipitous. Yeah, it was. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think of what else I wanted to cover when we did. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, this is bugging me that it's, there we go. Better framing. Let's act like we know film. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, we're figuring this out as we go, guys. We've never, I've never been live before. It's my first time. Be gentle. Besides, besides in college. <laughs> well, on Facebook Live, I'm totally, this is a whole new uh, user interface. And I don't know what's going on. Um, I hope all of our friends got those annoying notifications that you get when someone goes live. Yeah, but well, I, I guess it's from the page, so it's yeah. different. They probably I, don't. Did anybody? Facebook kills everything that has to do with pages on here, so they probably didn't get a notification. Exactly. I'm curious if somebody could answer me right now. Did you guys get a notification because you like the page? How many fingers am I holding up? And then got a notification because it was going live, or, or did you just see Mike and I share it? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm wondering. Mm -hmm. We do have three reviews coming up today. Um, We're doing it, which I just saw last night with my sister Anna. Um, Corey, uh, pools are just great for holding water. <laughs> <laughs> what about that time that you took your clothes off for money in front of the camera, Joe? Oh, on my Chatterbait account? <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a uh, moonlight as a cam girl. Um, yeah. Um, no notification, just on the top of my feed. Yep, that's Facebook for you. Yeah, really. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but this this weekend we're recording it. We got it coming out this coming Thursday, and what? then the Thursday coming. <laughs> what, what are you saying? <laughs> Why is that going to be like part of <laughs> That's the, gonna be the punchline? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and then uh, Logan Lucky, yes, second Logan movie this uh, year, and we have a brand new guest for that. Somebody we've never had on here. Um, Not one of our incestuous guests that come on. <laughs> yeah, five times throughout the year. It we're going to have an incestuous guest, <laughs> um, even though he hasn't been on in a little bit. Um, and then we're doing good time. Good time, good time. And it's going to be a good time. Yes. I just want to know, like, if there was, like, an old man who was standing outside the movie theater, and he's like, good time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go see good time. <laughs> and then, like, they had to peel him off the floor when the movie was done, because he's like, oh! <laughs> or he walked out when Robert Pattinson was jerking off the talk. <laughs> Did that actually happen in the movie? Oh, okay. I mean, we'll save it for the review. Right, yeah. Uh -huh. There's a whole a whole bunch about that. So Dude, stay that... tuned for that. That'll be coming out in three weeks, because next week's going to be it. Week after is Logan Lucky, and then the week after that is Good Time. <sighs> Which I recommend you go see before you uh, check out a review, because it was worth seeing for sure. What, Logan Lucky? No. Good time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can go see Good I'm sure there's people who enjoy Logan Lucky. Oh, definitely, Lucky. yeah. Um, man, our guest for Logan Lucky, though, texted me earlier, and he was like, I'm one of the only two people in the movie theater right now, and I think he brought something. I was the only him. person in Logan Lucky, and good yeah. time, too. <laughs> so, uh, my God, if anybody's looked at box office numbers lately, they're horrible. They're like, I don't know. Well, yeah, it's been, it's been rough. Like, end of August was like, what came out? <laughs> Why was we were like pulling, scraping like the bottom of the barrel to find movies to review. We didn't even review it, but the Hitman's Bodyguard was number one at the box office for three for weeks. Like four and it made weeks like now. forty million over three weekends. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a really sad state. And of... then like Logan Lucky at like twenty million was like one of the highest perform, like second highest performer. Well, yeah. I guess Annabelle Creation probably did a little bit better. Oh, definitely, Lucky. yeah. But even that did not do nearly as well as a horror movie should be doing. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. Oh, but you let me see your movie pass. Oh, your card. I don't know what I should. Yeah, be guys. Uh, update on the movie pass. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Good update. 
Well, I don't want to. Start. Yeah, don't show the number. <laughs> you guys want to see so the number can... of this debit card? You can like hide. Yeah. As you can see, but it's like a, an actual it's your... Mastercard debit card. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. You got it's not valid unless it's signed. You got to sign back. Here. Oh, I never signed my credit <laughs> cards. Um, but yeah, I got that in the mail on I think Sunday. Did you use it yet? Yes. Uh, the minute I got it, I was like, I'm going to go see Good Time today, just because I really was excited. Um, so here's a little update on what I found. I mean, there's really only the rules of you pay $10 a month, and you they mail you this debit card, and you go to, oh, no. <laughs> Damn it, Shane. <laughs> Shane, I guess you're going to go see movies on my behalf. Um, so you ordered this card. It's $10 a month. You can see one movie every day. So that's technically like you can see up to 30 movies a month mm -hmm. as long as it's one one movie a day. You can only – this is a newer rule that I just learned. Not that I would really ever do this, but you can only see the – you can only see one movie. One. Like you can't – I can't go back and see Good Time again. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so that's a thing. That's a rule. Um, and, yeah, I can't go to IMAX or 3D movies with it, um, which is – that's expected. Those things are expensive. It's kind of, that rule is kind of interesting to me that you can only see a movie once because I would think they would be interested in that data too. Because the whole thing with Movie Pass, if you guys haven't been following, is that they're they were at the price point of like twenty nine ninety nine or maybe just flat thirty or something like that mm -hmm. for their card. And you could same thing as it is now, see as many movies as you want once a day for the month. And then they lowered it to nine ninety nine, which they're obviously going to lose money on. But the idea being that they're going to gather all this data from people going to see movies more at this price point where they're able to sell that information to the movie theater chains themselves, to studios, to anyone related to the movie industry, just to have this valuable data about who's going to movies. So I think they would be curious about like who's go what, you know, what movies are bringing people back twice or who's going to see movies twice. Like right. what movies have that replay value where someone's going to pay, you know, like $26 total. It's a very good point, tickets. and I don't know if they're starting to. Or I don't know if that was that rule put in place to be like, uh, we hope they're not passing this off to their friend or whatever. That's yeah, and that's I probably also going through it myself, figuring out the logistics of how it works. You have you can't well, you have to be within a hundred meters of the theater you're going to to essentially um, like. Uh, like 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 in Foursquare, like you remember when you would kind of like sign into a place. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be within a hundred meters to kind of click, and it, it'll show the movie listings for that theater. And then you have to be within a hundred meters to be like, oh, I want to go at this time right here. And then once you pick that, it's like, okay, within thirty seconds, or <laughs> run. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Within 30 minutes, you have to go use your debit card for that specific movie oh, at that okay. specific time. When I was first explaining it to other friends, I was like, I think they've got this thing where they're like tracking you via GPS <laughs> to see whether you're in the theaters. But that is a way where you can't just hand this off to your friends and be like, you know, Unless I'm probably you not going to meet your friends at the theater and like check in and then hand in the card. You That's very true. That. Um, Ways to rip off movie pass even more than they're already being ripped off by giving you 30 movies a month for 9.99. I to to pile on to what you said before, I, it is interesting that they don't because I believe the price point changed for Movie Pass when they were acquired by a data mining company. Mm. Like that's what they're being run by. So it is curious that Although I guess maybe <clears throat> the, the the data is sort of poisoned at that point because they're it's different to go see a movie twice when you only paid once in the month, you mm -hmm. know. Like if Star Wars comes out and it's awesome and I'm only had to pay the once nine ninety nine for the monthly fee. I, yeah, I would go see it four times, like when episode oh, yeah. uh, eight comes out. Um, so that's kind of poison. It's not the same data as you know how much are people willing to go pay to go see the same movie again. That was kind of a bummer because I kind of wanted to see Good Time uh, for a second time. Um, I wanted to have another good time. But another kind of interesting. <clears throat> thing is that I guess if you have AMC and you have the stub whatever or what it would if you're signed up for AMC or if you're signed up for I have like the Regal app, what's interesting is this is still just money. You're you're so paying you're getting with, points. So you're things. getting points. So every eight <laughs> movies or whatever. <laughs> so I'm gonna have this whole stockpile of free movies in my Regal app <laughs> and I'm just going to be getting as many movies as I want for ten dollars a month. 
it's just it's very curious. Well, the uh, thing how with this is all the thing work with out. AMC that I like is that it doesn't give you a movie; it gives you a five dollar discount that you can use towards concessions and shit too. So I can go see all the movies in a month for nine ninety nine through the movie pass movie pass uh-huh. thing because I don't care if I save money for movie pass. I'm not going to use my discount for movie tickets for right. movie pass, mm-hmm. and then I can use that five dollars towards concessions and get like a free drink or no, no, a drink's probably like five fifty. Or something. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> free something, maybe candy or something. I also got a, like a little insight. I was just watching some like YouTube video where I keep listening to podcasts. So they're like, "Oh, what the fuck is like AMC like lashing out against Movie Pass?" Yada yada yada. Some guy on YouTube was kind of like talking about it, and he brought up a kind of a good point. And if you actually read what AMC says, this is kind of their point: is that they're kind of like we we don't want to a devalue like what a movie costs today. Which a fuck you. I was you. thinking about that, <laughs> but because it's way too much, and B, they don't want to by being involved with Movie Pass. If Movie Pass goes down the tubes in a few months, which honestly very plausible, um, <laughs> get Movie Pass while you can. Please take advantage of this while you there can. There was it's something in the AMC statement that was like. Uh... We don't want to be like it was like wait, it, it seems like an unstable business model, and we don't want to like support that. Like, mm-hmm. which is them trying to take like the PR side of like we're looking right. out for your guys' best interests. We don't go- want you guys to invest all of ten dollars in this plant. Like, yeah, what's what, there's no commitment with this plant. It's month to month. So like, what's the worst that happens? You're not signing a year long contract, or, right? That's it, it was very PR. Watch in the fine print somewhere mm-hmm. it says like you're in a year long contract. I've also read up on the sort of legality on it. I think the only way that MoviePass can really get out of this is if they start, and I don't even know if this is illegal, like, they'd have to, like, just stop taking MasterCard. Which, do they want to do that? For AMC to get out of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a a whole third or fourth of their business, because there's what? MasterCard, Visa, Discover, and American Express, like, and then, like, the small, like, you know, credit Mm -hmm. union, like, credit cards sometimes. Plus, as a franchise, are you allowed to be like discriminatory towards like one credit card company or yeah people do that too i mean it's bad business but people don't accept american express a lot that's true because american express is really good with like if you call american express and you're like i had a bad experience at this business and i don't think i got my money's worth american express be like all right we'll cancel that like they're really good with their customers Mm -hmm. and they're not so great sometimes with the business end um because of how good they are with customers so a lot of businesses won't take american express i've noticed yeah, so that's the whole Movie Pass experience uh, update. Uh, I did post it in some sort of uh, movie group that I'm in uh, on Facebook, and a lot of people were pissed. They're like, "How did you get yours?" I just got. I an ordered email mine. That was like they're after the initial delay. They're like, "We're still delayed like two to three weeks." Right. And I ordered mine like last week, so I'm not expecting mine until maybe the next batch that we record. Yeah. No, because I received mine. I ordered the Saturday after they announced, and I know people who ordered day one who still don't have theirs. And I was just kind of like, "Oh, movie pass." <laughs> What's well, they going might have. On? They might. They were probably like collecting all the names, mm-hmm. put them in like a big spreadsheet or whatever they use to print everything, and they were printing alphabetically or some other order that they had going on. Yeah. Um, also, mail's fucked up too. Mm-hmm. Probably not as much as movie pass, but mm. yeah. Um, hmm. What else is there to discuss that we wouldn't discuss on a normal episode? Oh, go to... Uh, we shared the link a while ago when they posted a single, but our, our friends in Bright Eye Deliverance just posted or uh, released their new EP. Um, if You See No Light, Press On is the title. Um, and it's got four of our previous guests. Mike Moserino is a guitarist. He was just on for... Uh, Dark Tower, Mm -hmm. Uh, and then Sean Henry, who was on for Get Out. He's a great drummer for that band, great musician. Uh, Alex Branchick, who is the bassist for that band and the bassist for my band, or our band, uh, My Fall Victim. He was on for Ghost in the Shell and Blair Witch. And then Andrew Lister is a great vocalist and guitarist for that band, one of my dear friends. Uh, And he was on for The Boss Baby. So four previous guests, former guests, have an awesome band. They're like a reggae punk rock kind of band Definitely. which is like a, it's interesting i don't think i've heard something in a long time that i could honestly say like i haven't heard this kind of like sound before especially mm-hmm. from like a local band i think that's really impressive right um because it's, it's it's really got like the reggae you know posse love for everyone type of vibes 
you know, like the, the upstroking guitars and stuff like that. But then it's also just got some straight up like guitar solos and some dirtier guitars going on for that rock vibe. There's some songs that are like 80s rock on there mm -hmm. in a way, like really cool, like 80s type choruses. It's, it's pretty cool. Recommend you check it out. So I think you can find it at a, a bright dash eyed deliverance dot bandcamp dot com. I'm actually going to check that right now to make sure that's correct. Red tube. That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bright dash eyed deliverance dot bandcamp dot com. Um, and they said it should be on iTunes and Spotify in a couple of weeks. So look for it there too. I don't know. How do you spell Xerox <laughs> X videos? What baby? No. <laughs> you want another beer? I'm still working. I'm still working. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of what else, um, we are using this live show to kind of cut down on the, some of the chit chat that happens before actual episodes. Um, and we're great at coming up with that, <laughs> but now <laughs> that we're here doing this, <laughs> we're trying to combine like three episodes of chit chat into, yeah, that's very true to one. Um, Hmm. So talk to us, guys. Who's who's watching? Well, I know you throw saw... us throw us an XD in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I know you saw um what is the that we we're not going to end up recording the or reviewing the uh, the Aubrey Plaza. Oh, we're uh, drinking uh, hams. We're getting ham. It's about to get ham. Which we'll also be drinking during one of our reviews tonight. Isn't that but it, it kind of reminds me of like a better uh, Natty Bow. Okay. This beer. Brewed in a true what? family tradition from the purest and choicest barley malt, grain and hops. It's like a less salty Natty Bow. Natty Bow always just tastes salty to me. We actually are. We have some... Uh, stuff brewing some projects. That's yeah. We're we're working on some uh, some music videos currently. Wink, wink. Hint, should be hint. out. Should be out soon. Um, I mean, I'm I'm still working with my band on the side, I'm writing music, spreading the vibes. There are uh, yeah. I feel like there's a number of music videos. There's multiple music videos in, in the, work. the works in the works right now. I don't know. There's a video of some sorts that will be coming out very soon that someone in this chat has information about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what were we just about to talk about? Oh, uh, angry goes west. Oh yeah. Angry goes west. Yeah. yeah. How was that? Cause I, I really wanted to see that. It was, it was good. I liked it a lot. I have a few minor complaints. I don't know if I want to get into all those just because they would spoil my complaints are really with the ending of the movie. Okay. And it would kind of spoil it a little bit. Right. Um, but Aubrey Plaza is real. Everyone's really good in it. Cause it's, it's got Aubrey Plaza. Um, the guy who's in like everything now, the blonde haired guy kind of short with like the ripped abs. He's the one who just got cast in Aladdin as like the character they made up. I think it's Billy Magnuson. Maybe. I know who you're talking about. I have no idea what his name is. Um, and then uh, Elizabeth Olsen is fucking great in it. And then uh, I can't remember the guy's name. He was in an episode of Black Mirror. Um, the black guy? No, no, no. Uh, the episode, the, the game to play test episode of season two of Black Mirror. Did you watch season two or three? I guess it's three. I yeah, it's know. three. They all kind of blend together. The, the newest Netflix one. Okay. Did yeah, you watch yeah. That? Okay. The, the one yeah. where he's doing like the play test with the Japanese game right. creator, uh -huh. that guy with the beard. Okay. He's in it. He plays uh, Elizabeth Olsen's uh, husband and mm -hmm. he's really, really good. And everyone's good. The ice cube son is in it too. I can't remember his name mm. or what he goes by. Mm -hmm. Ice cube junior. <laughs> what is ice cubes real name? Why can't I remember that? I don't actually know. Hey guys, what's ice cubes real name? Uh, Google. <laughs> Okay, Google. Does your phone work when you do that? Okay, Google. 
I What is Ice Cube's real name? O'Shea Jackson, you're right. So then O'Shea Jackson Jr. should be his son. Interesting. Uh, yeah, but it's got a really cool visual style. Mm-hmm. Like it, it does have a lot of like the sort of neon colors that are in like the the artwork for it. Like I think the artwork is literally in neon. Right. Um, is really cool. The acting's really good. Neon's in. Neon is cool. <laughs> <laughs> have an indie movie. It was. It's like, like, it. It, it was like it was like a five finger movie until the end, and the end is not enough to like write it off at all. It's still a good movie. Right. I should write a review in my, my letterbox for it. You should. Um, yeah, but I mean, I saw it with my girlfriend and she didn't mind the ending at all. It's it, it's the type of ending that will like divide people a little bit, I think. Mm-hmm. I was expecting it to go in one way right. and it doesn't go in that way at all. And it takes a, a different turn um, hmm. that I think some people will like and have liked. And then people like me will kind of be whatever about. But it's not enough to ruin the first like seven eighths of the movie, which are fantastic. That's good. Hey guys, if you're a fan of Letterboxd, mm. letterboxd.com, uh, which is a great uh, website or platform f- for reviewing movies or just looking at other people's reviews for movies, they finally, like two years later, developed an app for an Android. Android app, yeah. Um, I think if you've had an, an Apple device, it's been on there for quite a while. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. But we're on there, letterboxd.com slash HMF podcast. And then I'm mm-hmm. on there as letterboxd.com slash Michael D. King. Mm-hmm. And then Joe, are you letterboxd.com slash... I think it's Joseph underscore llamas. Llamas. Plural llamas. L-L-A-M-A-S. Uh, I haven't written a single thing on there. I just kind of like cataloging. I, just <laughs> I was, kind of I like was doing like... so good at like reviewing writing an actual review for every movie that I was actually seeing and putting it on there. Mm-hmm. And then I got really busy for like a two week period. And now I've got this backlog of like 15 to 20 movies that I've seen since my last review. And I'm like, I still want to write a review for everyone, but it takes time. I mean, more power getting to so you. Busy. I mean, there's like some, I mean, the fact that this podcast just, it's coming like a fucking freight train every three weeks, kind of. Like, I have to generate thoughts for it, but, like, on my own time, I can't even, like... Uh, I don't know. I just... It's hard for me to give ratings to movies that are outside of this podcast. The, rate, I, the ratings are easy. I could do the ratings all day. It's the reviews where it's, like, just being eloquent about every single... Because sometimes, like, Cause sometimes, sometimes I'll, I'll see a movie and I'm just like, it was okay. Like, I don't... It was a movie. <laughs> I give a lot and, of credit yeah. to people who mm-hmm. are professional, like, movie reviewers... <laughs> Not that we're a professional, but in writing form. I mean, like, it's easy to have a discussion right. about it, mm-hmm. but to write a concise, clear, especially on Letterboxd, where you're not trying to write, like, a, a really long, like, essay, and you're just trying to get your most important thoughts out. I give a, a lot of credit, a lot of props to those people. Yeah. Um, There's also been some film news. I mean, you were just talking about the Aladdin thing, where they invented a white character. Mm-hmm. to be in Aladdin. Um, I also, what was the, the big Star Wars news that Colin... Colin Trevorrow. Yeah, has... He's out. He's out for Star Wars 9. Got that Kathleen Kennedy boot. Yeah. I was reading some, I don't know whether it was AV Club or something else, but they said uh, the title was like, I don't know whether it was formed as a question or a statement. It was a lot funny, and I'm going to butcher it, but it was like, is it easier to blow up to the Death Star than keep the director position in a Star <laughs> Wars movie? <laughs> um, because this is now, uh, you know, two directors, well, three people, two director positions mm-hmm. uh, that have been And then what was that, was that, that quote that you were telling us about before where somebody was like, <laughs> he was telling everyone what to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was directing. Yeah. That's what directors there, do. There was like a really like kind of, B list like uh like film site like I mean we're not even on the radar of like film sites but they're just writing some bullshit article where it was kind of like it almost looked like Disney put it together kind of where it was kind of like well everyone's questioning you know like why was Colin like kicked out of here mm-hmm. obviously he had that bad movie uh, come out the book of whatever or what was his his release between Jurassic Park was one of and, the kids yeah 
Um, but everyone's kind of like pointing their finger at that, and people are like, "Well, actually, he was the kid from It, didn't it? I think so. Jane yeah, Lieberhart, Yeah. But they were like, "Well, actually, we did a little digging, and like he was really apparently he was really hard to work with on uh, Jurassic <laughs> World or whatever." <coughs> and um, they were like, "Here's a quote from an anonymous like crew member," and it was like he was telling everyone what to do or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying like, to find that. He's that the director. I'm trying to find that tweet that I sent before. <laughs> Here it is. Let's load it. Sorry, Twitter is taking too long to load. That's not acceptable. There was something else. To, there was another quote that wasn't as good, but it was basically like he didn't get fired because no one fired him on set. You like it was just like, well, yeah, that's usually how not firing works. You don't fire them, and they don't get go. fired. It was a tweet from uh, Dave Itzkoff, and he took a, a quote from, there's a Vulture story that had a bunch of quotes about this, and he just put the quote in like uh, like the Star Wars crawl thing <laughs> going on, and it's like, uh, there's one gatekeeper when it comes to Star Wars, and it's Kathleen Kennedy. If you rub Kathleen Kennedy the wrong way in any way, you're out. You're done. A lot of these young, new directors want to come in and say, I want to do this. I want to do that. A lot of these guys, Lord and Miller who were the guys that were fired from um, the Han Solo Solo. movie, Colin Trevorrow. They got very rich very fast and believed a lot of their own hype, and they don't want to play by the rules. They want to do shit differently, and Kathleen Kennedy isn't going to fuck around with that. (laughs) 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 It was an anonymous source with knowledge of the situation. (laughs) But a, I don't know, conversation we were having earlier was I was was just literally kind of getting like a little aggravated about it. I was just kind of like, why don't they just hire some old fucking crusty director that they can just kind of push around while he sits back and gets a paycheck. Yeah. And instead of like these young people who have their entire fucking career on the line who are like, no, I'm not going to make that artistic. I'm not going to throw away this artistic decision because like the what's it called? Cause the Disney corporation doesn't agree with it. It's just very, they're pushing these young people of their whole careers ahead of them into like a very, uh, between like a rock and a hard place. And eventually I can imagine what happened with Lord and Miller and what happened with Colin is eventually they're like, all right, you're going to do this or you're going to walk. And mm-hmm. they're like, well, no, I'm going to do it. And then they're, they're like, well, you're fucking fired. Um, I don't know. Cause Star Wars is this gigantic enterprise now, so it's just funny with Colin though because he's done bad movies. Or you, you would think he would just be like, "What? I'll just take the paycheck at this point." Now. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. It's exposure, at least. Like, and like, I mean, like, and then it's also like, what happened with Jurassic World? Then, like, mm-hmm. I guess it was like you were saying before, like, just nobody fired him for Jurassic World, but right, yeah, you know, maybe he was having the same problems there. Um, nobody had the balls to do it, and uh, was it Universal that does Jurassic? Yeah. I think it's universal. But there was also, like, something... I mean, like, a, another, like, really quick point that I brought up, and I think we said this right around Rogue One. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy, or whatever, was, like... Um, she said something a lot of people were, like, criticizing, and I mean, including myself. She was, like, there's no, like, woman film director out there in the world right now that is prepared to handle a Star Wars movie. They're just not well-equipped enough and I said, like, there's so many women directors out there that have more experience than Colin and Ryan, you know, the, the next two major Star Wars director combined. They really only have, like, two major releases, Looper and The Lost World, and then, like, two or three indie movies. It's kind of just like, I don't know. It's all It's not like It's not weird. like they got people that were, like, had, like, these huge projects under their belt. Like, they were getting right. these, like, indie directors for, like, sort of on the cheap, mm-hmm. you know. Like, it'd be one thing if it was, like, a blockbuster that they were treating, like, oh, we have to get, like, a big-name director that, you know, has something to their credit, you know? Because then, then right. they, to an extent, they would certainly limit you when it comes to female directors, mm-hmm. um, if that's your angle in terms of picking a director. Mm-hmm. Because the way Hollywood is set up, there are not a lot of great credits to be had for women directors under the name. Right. Um but there's certainly a lot of women directors out there that are capable of handling a Star Wars movie. Right. Or even directors, maybe not directors, maybe of color not directors or, that know. are mm-hmm. capable of standing up to Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> right. Yeah. As we've seen twice now or three times, if you count Lord and Miller twice. <laughs> yeah. But, um, 
Never a dull moment in the Star Wars world now that they've got a lot of balls in the air right now. I kind of took the Colin um, thing as good news. Oh, yes. Because I was, was not really excited for... Like, same. Rian Johnson I had faith in just because I've liked most of almost everything I've seen that he's done. The two um, movies he's done. <laughs> is it really just Looper and... Uh, Looper and Brick. No, and didn't he do Safety Not Guaranteed, or is that Colin? That's Colin. Oh, okay. So I liked one movie that Colin did yeah. and then hated Jurassic World and didn't bother with his, uh, the kids movie. I guess it wasn't a kids movie, but it had kids in it. it Ryan's actually done other stuff. Yeah, but I again, thought there was more. It was, I think there was one other thing that was between indie and major, but I mean, I don't know. It's really, again, it's such a limited, he's just not putting out a lot. Uh, not that that's a bad thing. I'm sure maybe it took a while to conceptualize uh, something like Brick or uh, Looper. I uh, did Brick in 2005, The Brothers Bloom in 2008, Oy. and Looper in 2012. Right. Is that everything or just his well, most well-known? I think, I, I mean, an additional... Three episodes of Breaking Bad. Right. Uh, one episode of Terrier is the TV series. What is it? It has a dog on the cover. <laughs> like Terry <laughs> Terriers. I can't tell if it's like... What is that? <laughs> I don't know. Has anyone ever watched Terriers? <laughs> Ex-cop and recovering alcoholic... All right, that's now I thought that was going to start. Oh. Ex-cop and recovering alcoholic Hank Dolworth partners with his best friend, former criminal Britt Pollack, in an unlicensed private investigation business. But the cover has like a dog's nose. Yeah, on it. the <laughs> <laughs> terriers. <laughs> Just picture like a gritty true crime. I was story. waiting for the second half of that sen- his sentence to be like partners with his best friend, a, <laughs> terrier. a terrier, Jack Russell terrier. <laughs> oh boy! Yeah, yeah and a bunch of shorts. He did the uh, the fly episode of Breaking Bad. That's one of my favorite episodes. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited for episode. He also eight. did the one. He did one of the last. I think he did that one, and then he did uh, two in the last season. Um, as long as it wasn't the finale, then I probably liked them because the whole last season's great. Besides the finale, I just don't like the last season. I feel like they're oh, just Breaking Bad, really going into a. Weird direction. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's just not. I feel like they, they, they up the intensity and the anxiety and the anticipation and the finale doesn't deliver really on what yeah. they've been building the entire mm-hmm. season. Like, they, they really built themselves like I think of like the, the, the penultimate kind of, yeah. episode like got me so amped mm-hmm. when like he's like on the phone with Walt. Is it Walt? Walt? Yeah, Walt Jr. And he's like, I've still got things left to do and leaves the phone hanging. And then like the Breaking Bad like theme starts like and we get to hear the full song in the bar. Right, right, right. It's so hype. And then the last episode like does not really deliver on that at all. But um, there's something but there, there's something about watching the last episode and being a little like. Uh, and then kind of looking back into the whole last season and having faith in the writers being like. All right, like I love where you're going, but like as long as this ends up in the right place, yeah, as long as yeah. this is, you just kind of keep uh, sort of extending your belief. Uh, it was to no, what, it was yeah. no Sopranos last season. I'll give it that. Jesus Christ, yeah. Um, Still recovering from my first watch through of The Sopranos. It's a phenomenal show. It was pretty, 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 pretty good. Um. But yeah. But yeah. But yeah. Hello, Lindsay and Connor, who have just joined us. Both guests of the podcast. That's right. And Sean Mason joined a little bit ago, and he was also a guest of the podcast. All of our fans are just people who have been on the podcast. We just have to have start having as much people on. as <laughs> Every time we bring a guest on, we get a new fan. <laughs> It's like the episode of The Office where Michael Scott, he's on the kids, the TV show. He's talking about like his dream oh, yeah. when he gets older. He's like, when I get older, I want to have a hundred kids. So they all have to be my friends and they can't say no to me. <laughs> That's what we're doing when we invite people on the podcast. It is. They have to be a fan. They can't say no. Oh, boy. But I feel like we should... 
what time do you think we should start wrapping this up? Like, or like have it wrapped up by like three fifteen probably, or I mean four fifteen, I guess. So we'll have enough time for yeah, at the most probably good time and yeah. All right. I mean, so we're gonna start wrapping it up. I mean, if you guys want to bring up any topics that you guys want us to talk about, again, this is just sort of this trial and error sort of. We're trying this out. This segment. I like it. It's been fun. I like it too. I'm already tipsy. So I'm ready, lubed up for the to, yeah. first episode, which was our intended purpose. It's going to be a long night, fam. We're doing three episodes, and then we're going to crash a 21st birthday party. <laughs> Kevin's bringing us to a 21-year-old's birthday party at a bar that's not even a bar. It's just like a dance club that I often describe as... Remember in Brazil when all those people died in that nightclub fire? <laughs> it was a club like this. <laughs> That's what this is. This is like a fire waiting to happen where there's too many dead bodies in front of the entrance. <laughs> and you all die in there just because there's no ventilation. It's underground. Um, but yeah, there's. it wouldn't be the first time we're crushing a 21-year-old. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be a long and eventful mm-hmm. day. Um, when are we going to eat is my question. <laughs> um, I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure once, I mean, we record our next episode and then we have somebody that we've never, I've never met this guy. Um, you guys can check him out. He's handle or whatever is uh, named like dead fellow or something like literally all one word dead fellow. His name is Hayden something. And we've never met him, but I think he went on Joe's podcast and was like, uh, can you get me on that podcast? And Joe's like, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, we need guests. <laughs> <laughs> we need fans. <laughs> we need- <laughs> oh, new fan. Um, <laughs> um so, yeah, I mean, before Kevin, we can probably go get something to eat. What time is Kevin coming? Eight. Okay. So, I don't even know if, I mean, are we going to talk about Logan Lucky for two hours? You know, it's just kind of. Yeah. Or even, like, is Kevin going to start? See, we say that every, here's a little behind the scenes of the podcast, that every time before we're about to record an episode, we're like, this will be a quick one. We don't, we don't have too much to say about it. It's a quick, easy review. And then two hours later, we're like, oh, all right, we got to start closing this review up. No, this this is an accurate portrayal of how uh, a recording day works out. Uh, Mike and Joe are like, oh, you know, we'll do this one, then we'll do this one, then we'll do this one. We leave like two hours for each episode, and we'll be done by like 11 p.m. And it's like four in the morning, and we're like looking at each other. And we're like, we still got to record another episode. <laughs> like the third episode, and I feel like I'm talking, and Joe hasn't said anything in half an hour. <laughs> And I'm just trying to get through my notes so we can finish the episode and go to sleep. When I like, when I like clock out, you can really hear me clock out. I'm just like, or you can't hear. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, because sometimes I don't feel like we bang them out like all like in a row. Sometimes uh, a guest will like stay and talk to us, which is fantastic. Uh, I mean, like I really like talking to people outside of our episodes. But, I mean, when you have block scheduling like this, uh, I was talking to a fellow podcaster who was about to come on today but uh, ran into some other scheduling issues. It's when you ha- – he's like, man, I'm so jealous you guys do block scheduling. Like, only just one day a month. He's like, that could never work. I have a kid or whatever. And I was like, well, <laughs> it's got a set of headaches, <laughs> literally. Headaches. Well, I don't envy yeah. having to do this every week. <laughs> Oh, no, not at all. But, I mean, there are times where we're like, man, I wish we could have been more timely with, like, that release of that that review yeah. of that movie. Or it's kind of like, Good Time is Good getting... Time came out, like, three or four weeks ago, mm-hmm. and we're not going to get... The episode won't come out for another three weeks. Right, and it's like, no, by the time it's out... Although, with Good Time, that helps it. because hopefully more people have seen it then. It's, I mean, we'll talk about this in the review, but I can't believe A24 didn't go, like... Balls out on like advertising that. I don't know. Oh, I finally saw the full trailer. I don't know if it had been out already, and I just did, I missed it. I had seen the teaser trailer for a uh, disaster artist, but they had the theatrical trailer. 
Oh, I didn't good, see that. Good time yeah. for a disaster artist. It looks way better in that trailer, I have okay. to say. Um, just because they show more of the characters. You could see Seth Rogen a little bit, who looks like he's maybe gonna carry some of the film. Mm-hmm. And then uh Dave Franco is so it's, it's more than it's more than the scene of him trying fucking up yeah, the line yeah, over and over again. You, you okay. see a whole breadth of the scenes. Um and I, I have Ooh. a little bit more faith in James Franco's performance, but I have to say it, it just looks funny. It doesn't really look like I'm kind of curious why they're like this is an Oscar movie. <laughs> like they must just have maybe the, the idea of like movies about Hollywood. Yes. Do well. At Cause that's all I, yeah. It's, but I don't know if the room is, it's the, yeah, right. It's the room. And then room is the one we did. Right. The room. I don't know if the room is enough Hollywood as more of just like, it was like an indie cult phenomenon. Yeah, It's a cult classic. Yeah. I don't know if Hollywood considers that enough of like them to be like, oh, all right, right. This is us. We're flattered. We're going to give it an Oscar. But yeah, that's, I'll have to watch that because I did before Good Time. That was before Good Time. Yeah, because I got yeah I got the whole like run of what A twenty four is gonna release. I mean, like I got like the the Florida Project, and then I got the new. I oh, know. Um, I'm sorry. It was before it. Oh really? I, okay. Now, now I'm thinking back for Good Time. What I a saw bizarre it. trailer to put put before it. Well, I mean, it's got big names and it. it's got Seth Rogen and James Franco. So I think that's All what A24 is, like is banking on too. Though. It's yeah. like yeah. trying to push it. Um, All right. Yeah. Yeah. Good time. I got there just in time. Now that I'm thinking about it, I got there and like they were doing like the Sinopolis is shown in 30 countries around the world and oh, okay. like the theater mm-hmm. trailer thing. Huh. <sighs> but yeah, this has been. A segment <laughs> that we're we were supposed out. to name it. This oh, we were <laughs> to the one viewer that's watching. That's probably Joe on his phone. <laughs> that's us recording. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. For anyone who's watching on the feed, hop in if you have any ideas for what we should call this segment. Because we plan to do more of these probably once every three weeks when we do our recording batches. I think we'll definitely have a more structured and announced i mean we just we announced that we would be doing this an hour or two ago <laughs> so sorry about I, I mean it really is we're just kind of laying oh, it out some, there some of you might be happening. watching this in the future because i'm sure we'll download this oh exactly we'll more more people will watch post this it more after formally. it's posted uh yeah um but yeah uh if you guys have an idea of what we should call this segment because we would like to start kind of uh, yeah, recording these and then officially putting them out there. Um, what were some ideas that we had? Uh, we had good ones and I can't remember now. I know one of, one of the not good ones was on the house. <laughs> we were just thinking of like drinking terms and like Wait, isn't that hanging the, around. That's like, like the, the name house. of the fake TV show in that Britain Nick sketch where like yeah. he keeps going to like his... <laughs> He goes to like his uh, ex girlfriend's like restaurant, <laughs> yes. and then like a lemonade stand outside of her house. He's reviewing all, yeah. The, and then the, he breaks into her house and vomits everywhere. Um, did you watch Glow this season? No, I really liked how uh, there's one guy that used to be in a bunch of their uh, skits. The the blonde guy. I don't know if you remember him from the trailers for Glow. He's the producer in Glow, the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, what Britain, he, remember the one Britain Nick skit where it was like them in like bed and it was like after sex like rituals mm-hmm. and there's a third guy that gets brought into oh, okay, it that yeah. he's in Glow and he's actually really good in Glow. Oh, that's good. That's funny. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's nice. I remember watching him on Britain Nick skits. But yeah. Um, where, were, oh, where were the, we had others. I'm going to look through our chat. I think. See what you guys think of these. I was really fucking around with the idea of being like uh yeah, I'll let Mike look it up because I don't even remember now. Oh, something like Real Talk. R E E L. It's spelled like a film reel. <laughs> or In Real Life, which doesn't even. It, it, that's a kind of like an internet, like IRL, but then you're trying to. I don't know. It's that, That's. They're, they're still watch. <laughs> that's too sloppy. Real Talk's a little better because it's. We're talking about things outside of movies, I guess. Um, I can't remember what else we said. Um, uh, we don't want to... Uh, something live is a little too confusing because we do live shows too, not just like Facebook live shows, like live venue shows. We don't want to get 
the categorization. I guess that's really all we talked those. about was real. Okay, so we're open to a lot of suggestions. <laughs> uh, anyone who can... The ideas I threw out were pre-roll, marker. <laughs> I was just throwing out film terms. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we really... If you're just like, joining we, us, we're trying to name this uh, Facebook Live segment that we plan on doing in the future. Yeah. Something drinking-related, but film-related, which is like what our podcast already is, so we took the good one. Yeah, well, our one segment was that we used to uh, talk about the Oscars or whatever is uh, establishing shot. Yes. So we take a shot, and establishing shot is to a certain type of... Uh, a wide shot. Being like, yeah. This is where we are. This is this location. Shot in a movie. Uh, so quite the double entendre. Hmm. Um, so we're really looking... We Big fan of those. So if you we, can think we, of... We set the bar high yeah. with that one, and now we've got to follow it up. So if you can think of, I mean, even something along the lines of... Real Talk is the closest, because it kind of takes from film, and it kind of takes at what we're talking about. But if you could kind of come up with one that also has some sort of drinking implication within it, too, that would be ideal. Uh, so, yeah, leave those in the comments. or Like, real friends. How, How many, many of us? us? <laughs> How many of us? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and then we already have like live is taken for our actual live right. episodes mm -hmm. at like festivals and stuff like that so that won't work for these because this isn't really live i mean i guess it is you guys are watching it live but yeah sh and should we continue is this is this working is the whole live thing working is how it, are we is, doing is another <laughs> how, how do you think this is going so far uh, <laughs> How many fingers would you give this live broadcast? <laughs> is live something we should do, or should we just record this on our regular mics and release it separately, just like we do establishing shot? I don't know. I wanted to do some sort of live thing, but it is going to be like on Saturdays, and I know not a lot of people are just kind of sitting around on Facebook on Saturdays mm -hmm. too. Um, so yeah, comments, suggestions, whatever you have, send them our way. We got the Twitter behind us at HMF Podcast. Um, we got the, uh, you know, the Instagram, how many fingers podcast. It's nice having you reading them off. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, usually the one reading the There's things. a lot of hesitation. <laughs> I'm actually physically looking at the poster. Um, there's how many fingers podcast.com. And, uh, also, uh, what you should be watching us. Jesus. <laughs> Laugh door slam. Yeah. Uh, Facebook.com slash how many fingers podcast. Right. Oh, and obviously if we, continue to do this on Facebook, which I think we will, um, you'll maybe be alerted. Probably not. If you like, sounds like nobody was. Alerted. I don't know. Yeah. People just happen to find this on their <laughs> Facebook feed. So I'm pretty so, sure your sister had the page. Liked. Oh no. Yeah, she did. And yeah, I think my sister literally was like, no, I just found it on my feed. Uh, so we're going to have to think of a better way to alert people that we are live. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, uh, it's been a time. It has been a live broadcast. The name of this broadcast to be determined, TBD. But uh, yeah, I think we're going to sign out and get set up to record three episodes. Stay tuned for those coming up. We got It, a review of It coming up this Thursday. Mm -hmm. We have a review of Logan Lucky the Thursday after that, and then a review of Good Time starring Robert Pattinson jerking off a dog the week after that. <laughs> Uh, thanks for watching signing out for how many fingers the live podcast i'm mike i'm joe and we'll see you guys in three weeks